Hello and welcome to the peatlands. In the previous video we saw how to extract a peat soil monolith. In this video we will show what needs to be done to the monolith to allow us to delineate and eventually identify soil horizons. While removing the monolith the surface may get smeared or covered by crumbling material from the topsoil. Therefore, the surface of the monolith should be cleaned off with a knife. Also, simply blowing can remove fine material. Because structure is one of the main criteria for the designation of a horizon, the soil structure should be made as visible as possible. For this, the monolith will be systematically loosened. You can accomplish this by taking the underside of the monolith and lightly shaking it. Sometimes it also helps to lightly knock on the side of the monolith. Furthermore, you must pull the peat lightly apart across the monolith and along its long side. Here it is very important that you just expose existing cracks and not additionally tear open the peat. Existing cracks can usually be recognized by a more or less shiny surface. All of this handling should be done along the entire length of the monolith with the same force. This is the best condition for taking photos of the monolith. Two wooden blocks ensure that the measuring tape will be at the same height as the monolith. In this way you will be able to correctly read depth measurements on the photo. On windy days, two clothespins can be used to fasten the measuring tape in place. Just as with the profile, the monolith should also be photographed in the shade. Later, the monolith will be taken apart. Then it is especially helpful to have a good photo of the original condition. For the next step, it is important to know at which depth the shrinkage cracks end. On this side, it is clear that the shrinkage cracks are at least 60 cm deep. On many sides, however, it is difficult to recognize vertical shrinkage cracks. Some parent materials, such as the slightly decomposed sphagnum moss peat, also known as white peat, are especially resistant to the formation of shrinkage cracks. Even when deeper cracks are present, these are not well recognizable in an intact monolith. Therefore, the monolith will be broken down the entire length so that two-thirds of its width stays intact. In case any cracks are already present, the peat will preferentially split along these cracks. Then you look at the broken place to identify the areas where the peat had already split by natural means and where it first ripped after being broken open. More detailed instructions are included in the next video. You should break open the monolith even if it has clear shrinkage cracks. You can choose the side upon which you can follow the natural cracks better. In this way, the exact borders to various transitions in structure or parent material are more visible. Once this has been done, you can photograph the monolith again. Now we know how to optimally prepare a monolith for the identification of soil horizons. Here again are all the steps at one glance. The next videos are tutorials on identifying pedogenic zones and delineating soil horizons. See you soon!